Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about fluorescent microscopy. So coming to the principle of the fluorescent microscopy, it is a technique in which this microscope uses fluorescence and phosphorescence instead of scattering reflection which helps in the study of properties of organic and inorganic substances. So here organic and this inorganic substances will be placed on the base plate of this fluorescent microscope. And here I am going to show you the uh, mechanism how this mechanism of the fluorescent microscopy will exhibit and at the end of the video I am going to show you the structure of this fluorescent microscopy I mean at the outward structure how the uh, microscope will be looked and also I am going to show you the images how the images will be formed by this fluorescent microscopy you know the microscopic images okay and here what I have said you organic and inorganic substances can be uh, visible I mean when it will be placed upon the base plate of the microscope this will be the base plate of the fluorescent microscope and this uh, and upon this base plate specimen will be placed and make sure that the specimen will be mixed with fluorescent and here if you see here this is a technique in which this microscope uses fluorescence I have mentioned here right so this fluorescence and phosphorescence either you can use fluorescence or as phosphorescence and here the best examples of the flu fluorescence are cowmerins, naphthalamides and perylins and you can also take rhodamines also and uh, you know some of the fluorescence will also be you know, it will also be formed by the benzenes uh, for example if you take in the case of benzathanones like this there will be many many examples and I have, I have written only here the main examples these are the types of examples of fluorescence and if you take any of the type of fluorescence and it should be completely mixed with the specimen which you take on the base plate of the microscope of fluorescent microscopy I mean okay and this specimen should be mixed with fluorescent dye I mean the type of fluorescent which you took and here it should be and make sure that it should be mixed with the specimen and then now what happens is that the light I mean I, I like I'm going to explain this phenomena later so before entering into that phenomena let us see here uh, discovery the fluorescent microscopy was firstly discovered by Eric Bedzik, William Morerner and Stephen Hell these three are the scientists who firstly discovered this fluorescent microscopy and they also awarded with the Nobel Prize for, for the discovery of this fluorescent microscopy on 8th October 2014 so now let us discuss about the mechanism of this fluorescent microscopy I mean how the how the fluorescent microscopy will work so here if you see here the light source is very much important for each and every microscope right and if you see here the lights you know that the light will exhibit different properties of color right and many colors of light will be exhibited out through a light source and here this excitation filter will play a major role so here in this total fluorescent microscopy the one important thing the important thing which you have to remember is emission filter and excitation filter plays a major role in this total microscope this is the emission filter which is called as a spectral emission filter and here excitation filter this both spectral and emission filter plays a major role in this fluorescent microscopy so how it plays a major role let us see so here light source from the light source the light will be exhibited out and it falls upon the excitation filter right and when it falls upon the excitation filter we know that there are different colors of light right and the different colors of light from that suitable light will be exhibited out from this excitation filter so blue color light will be exhibited out from this excitation filter so now this blue color light will be allowed to fall upon this dichronic mirror and here this dichronic mirror plays a major role in such a way that it exhibits two properties where it reflects the light or else and another another property which it exhibits is it sends the same light to the, to the detector of the image so how the same color will be formed and how the reflection will be formed let us see now so if you see here uh, only single light will be formed by this excitation filter from the different lights of the from which is passed from the light source and that a light which will be which will be exhibited out by this excitation filter is blue color light right and that blue color light is allowed to fall upon this uh, you know objective lens by this diachronic mirror because this diachronic mirror reflects reflects the light in such a way that it allows to pass upon the objective lens and now this objective lens which consists of this blue light is allowed to pass upon the specimen and here we know that the specimen is mixed with fluorescent dye right fluorescent dye and here the fluorescent dye normally the major fluorescent dyes will be green in color or as if you take in any other color majorly uh, majorly according to my knowledge the fluorescent dyes will be always in green in color okay so that 
fluorescent eye will be mixed with specimen right so the blue color light will be exhibited to this specimen you know it, it pass upon this specimen and then what happens here the specimen is mixed with fluorescent dye right and the fluorescent is green color right and now the green color along with the blue color will be passed upon this um, will be passed you know the reverse in the reverse manner i mean it pass upon the objective lens and from the objective lens it falls upon this diachronic mirror so here diachronic mirror will send only the green color light okay it uh, it sends only the green color light but major part of the blue color light will be rejected of course some of the blue color light will also be sent but majorly but major detection of this blue color light will be taken by this diachronic mirror only so green color light pure green color light as well as the unpure uh, blue color light will be passed upon this spectral emission filter and what is the major function of this spectral emission filter it detects the total blue color light which has been passed up to here okay so the major the major blue color light will be detected by this diachronic mirror and total you know total i mean only some amount of blue color light will be passed from this diachronic mirror right and that some amount of light will be de will be detected by this emission filter okay so here pure green color light will be passed again to the ocular lens and from the ocular lens uh, you know there is a connection to the detector in such a way that the image will be formed on this detector and now we can see that image which has been formed upon the detector so which type of image will be formed the type of specimen which you will take okay and make sure that that specimen will be mixed with the fluorescent eye again i am going to explain you the phenomena in a, sing, in a simple way here we know that light exhibits different color properties and the light uh, you know the light from the light source will be allowed to fall upon the excitation filter and this excitation filter it compresses all of the light and it up, it you know it reflects the particular light in such a way that blue color light will be emitted out and this diachronic mirror plays a major role in such a way that it it sends the light in such a way that it reflects the light and allows to pass upon the objective lens and from the objective lens the blue color light will be allowed to the specimen and make sure that the specimen is mixed with the fluorescent dye and we know that the fluorescent will be always in a green color and some of the fluorescent will be red in color and some will be in uh, yeah black in color but majorly you know black in not, not black brown in color i mean you know some of the, but some of the fluorescent dye major some major fluorescent dye will be green in color only and make sure that the specimen will be mixed with the fluorescent dye which is in green in color so when the blue color will be emitted to fall upon this specimen we know that the specimen will be mixed with the fluorescent dye so the green color light will be emitted out so along with the green color light blue color light will be also emitted out because uh, because uh, you know blue color light has been formed right from the light source so the blue color light will also be emitted out from this objective lens which has been passed from the specimen and now the blue color light along with the green color light will be passed upon this diachronic mirror and this diachronic mirror will reject some amount of blue color light and remaining blue color light i mean only some amount of blue color light will be placed over and that remaining blue color light will be also passed and again the green color light will also be passed and that blue color light as well as the green color light which has been passed will fall will you know will will form upon this spectral emission filter which will fall upon the spectral emission filter and now this emission filter what does it do it rejects the total the blue color light which has been uh, which has been passed up to here that blue color light will be totally detected and only the green color light will be sent up to this ocular lens and now this ocular lens will send the type of image which has been detected to this detector this detector the major function of this detector is to form the image and that image will be connected to the computer in such a way that we can easily find the type of image which has been formed so this will be the phenomena of this fluorescent microscopy so coming to the advantages the major advantage of this fluorescent microscopy is it helps in easy detection of the any type of protein or antigen of interest i mean it depends upon your interest i mean if you take particular type of antigen for example if you take a blood stream and uh, you know the blood consists of antigens right and to know about the particular type of antigen uh, you can take the blood from the human and you can inject uh, you know or as you can place it on the base plate in such a way that you can easily find the type of uh, antigens which has been present in that type of blood okay like that it depends upon your interest that's only the reason i have mentioned here interest in your specimen and instead of specimen i have to the blood stream there right that's it and because background is completely dark except you are fluorophore tagged antigen i mean for example if you see here the detector will form the image right so how the image will be formed is that uh, you know the only the region which we want will be very bright but the surrounding region will be very dark uh, uh, you know if uh, this sentence you can understand only when you can see the proper image and that image will be present at the end of the video and that video will also be explained okay and now if you see here the background region will be completely dark this sentence you have to must and must remember see here the background region in the image i am saying in the image the background region will be completely dark 
but the fluorophore region i mean you know the fluorophore is mixed with this specimen right and this specimen i mean the particular type of object which you want will be visible but the surrounding region of that object will be totally dark which cannot be visible i mean it will be totally black in color okay that's only the uh, advantage of this fluorescent microscopy coming to the disadvantage photo bleaching occurs and you cannot focus your specimen for much time at higher magnification and this fluorescent microscopy is too expensive i mean the cost of this uh, fluorescent microscopy is very high so this is about the fluorescent microscopy So friends, you can see the here image, right? And this will be the image when you can observe uh, through the face contrast microscopy. And here, I am not going to say the name of the structure. You have to comment in the comment box. Of course, I know the structure, the name of the structure, but you have to comment in the comment box because it is very easy to you can understand, right?